Good evening, booktubers. As promised, tonight is my review on book two in the Landry Family series called Pearl in the Mist. Now, it had been years since I've read this book, but I pulled my copy, which has this cover, as you see right there, and kind of reread it, browsed it, because I kind of remember just the main points of it, but I didn't remember everything. So apparently this book picks up shortly after the end of the first book, because if you remember in my last review, I had said that I thought that Ruby should have been the a standalone book. But this book, I will say, did kind of deviate a little bit from the usual V.C. Andrews formula, or it actually made it more realistic. Now, we still had Ruby, the, you know, the lead ingenue heroine, who and goes along with her crippled twin sister, Giselle, to a new all-girls school. Now, as you can guess, if you've read Heaven or if you read Petals in the Wind, whenever anyone goes to an all-girls school, you know what they always have? Mean girls and bullies who torture the poor ingenue. Now, this book, I don't think they quite torture her, except that her lovely, warm, and loving stepmother, Daphne, tells the evil, sadistic headmistress, played in the Lifetime movie by Mary Lou Henner, um, about Ruby's upbringing being less than stellar. So, of course, naturally, she's on the headmistress's shit list. And as it goes on, she makes a friend with one of her roommates, Abby, and she also becomes really good friends with the grandson of one of the founders of the all girls school who was blind. And, you know, I actually had thought based on the cover, it looked like maybe there was going to be a romance or something that was going to develop between the two. Sadly, not to be the case. Considering how Bo was and how her creepy half brother, Paul was Lewis in this book seemed like Prince charming to me. Well, anyways, the setting of the book being in the 1960s plays very well for two points that I felt just got skimmed over. First one involved Abby, which is uh, Ruby's only friend, where Ruby's evil twin sister Giselle does not like Ruby being friends with Abby, although I don't understand why other than Giselle is just a very miserable person, exposes that Abby is not pure. Now, in the 60s, that meant not fully Caucasian. And it is only, and back in the 1960s, there was not a lot that Abby could do. Didn't have the recourse that she would have now. So it's skimmed over. It's explained, but it's very much not really put a lot of plot to it. The other thing is, the other issue that was touched upon was with Ruby's art teacher. Um, think the movie The Children's Hour about lesbianism and having relations with a student. All hearsay, not proven. So her other ally is also expelled. And then finally, the last thing, and that actually kind of what causes the end of the book. Well, Ruby ends up having... How can I say this? Ab, Ruby and uh, Bo hang out, hook up. Bo gets sent off overseas. Ruby ends up with a baby and almost is sent to an abortion clinic, a back alley one, I might add, which causes Ruby to take off and go back home to the bayou. Unfortunately, near the presence of her grandfather and her half-brother, as well. And right before a hurricane. I will say the book was a little bit different. Um, it had all of the VC Andrews tropes, you know, the half brother that can't quite quit loving Ruby. Uh, we also have uh, the mean girls. Um, and we also have the mean head mistress. And also our lead character loses IQ points. It always happens in the second book in a V.C. Andrews book. It always does. Always in the first book, if you ever notice, if anyone that's read V.C. Andrews books, the lead character has their brains in the first, has an IQ 
relative intelligence, common sense in book one. And then book two, it's like their IQ drops 50 points. I thought it was actually an interesting book. It had had the VC Andrews, but it had a few twists to it and it made it really relevant or just skimmed it. I don't want to watch the movie because I'm not really sure how the movie is going to play on those elements or if they're going to add something new or not. Um, after this, I, I still stand with my original thought that Ruby, the first book in the series, should have been a standalone book. If you agree or don't agree, you know, just leave a comment. Let me know. Um, you can also hit that subscribe button. So my future reviews on VC Andrews books, which I will be reviewing after the Landry series, I'll be reviewing uh, the Dalaganger and the Castile just for fun. And also my sweet Adrena, not the sequel, ugh, but the actual original VC Andrews written version. And if I feel like it, maybe I'll do the Cutler series. I know most people want to forget about it because it's a copy and paste of every other book, but we'll get to that. So I hope you guys have a good night and I hope there's enough in the Lifetime movie for everyone to snark at. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.